Hey guys, it's Wraith. Uh, welcome to the park. Uh, this is a horror game. It's a psychological horror game, which are my favorite kind of horror games. I'm not a big fan of bleh, jump out and scare you games. I really like atmospheric games, and I heard this one's really, really good with the atmosphere and environment and storyline. Um, I've been wanting to play this for a while. I know it's been out for about a year. Um, I have not watched anybody else play this one. Just for the sake of not being spoiled on anything. So, I'm going to start a new game here. And go visit an abandoned um, amusement park. Park is a narrative experience best played in a dark room wearing headphones. It deals with subject matter that may be disturbing to some players. During the course of play, the park may manipulate graphics, audio, control settings, and your sanity. This is perfectly normal and should not be any cause for alarm or psychiatry. Funcom presents. In my heart and mind, I always return to Atlantic Island Park. Zipak. Where's Mr. Bear? You got some bloodshot eyes, I honey. Haven't seen Mr. Bear, Callum. Stay in the car. I'll go and ask information. And we're in. Can I go back and talk to your kid? Oh, red hair. Is he in pajamas? Oh, no. Okay. So, let's see. Can't jump. There is no shift run. Attention, patrons. The park is now closed. Please make your way to the car park at your earliest convenience. Employees, prepare the park to shut down. Erect. Okay. Um. Why can't I turn? Oh, okay. It's a mouse. Alan was born the day this place opened. This is his favorite place in the world. Tribute to the untamed heart of Solomon Island and the people who used their talents to bring the dream of Nathaniel Winter to life. May this park be a place where joy and laughter are gathered and used to infect all of those who follow after. Dedicated this first day of May, 1977, James B. Longley. Oop, no, I don't want to look at it again. I don't want to look at it again. How do I get out of you? Nope. Well, that worked. Happy clouds. What? what? The drugs are kicking in. Hey, Lorraine. Lorraine. Don't blame yourself, Lorraine. People lose things all the time. Take a deep breath and think about the last place you saw your son's teddy bear. Hey, stop! I think your boy just ran into the park. I'll unlock the gates for you. How did he know, like, immediately that I was coming here for the bear? And okay, you're actually there. Alright, let's make sure it wasn't some sort of psychotic trip. All shining in the bartender is actually a ghost kind of thing. Callum, I told you to wait in the car. Fish eye bulge, what the hell is that? Welcome to the park. Jurassic Park? Hello, Willy Wonka. Daniel Winter welcomes you to Atlantic Island Park. The 
There's something special about the entrance to an amusement park. A line drawn between the real world and the world of whimsy within. On this side, the apathy of our everyday lives. And on the other, anything we might dare to dream. It's no wonder Callum ran back inside. I wouldn't want to leave either. Attention employee, the park is now closed. The park is riding into Silent Hill Land. Oh man. Um Yeah. That's the world's slowest escalator. Night fell. That's what happened. Ah, there we go. Okay, I can run now. I wonder if I have a, do I have a stamina or can I just indefinitely run? I'm gonna waste all my running running in a circle here. Doesn't seem to have a top, like a amount, so that's good. Thing jumps out and freaks my shit out. I can just run like hell. Hello, birds. Or bats. Come back. Oh, hi. Oh, into the spooky house. So I like the environment so far. It's very nice looking. Despite being super dark. And I'm hoping this doesn't show up too dark uh, on the recording. I'll have to brighten it up if it is. Bruce Wayne. Where are you? Come on this way. Carrie Killian is Satan's whore. I'm assuming I'm Carrie Killian. Callum! Come on, mommy. Um. Mm hmm. I guess we're gonna go in here and see if he's in here. If I can go in here. Ooh. Hello, darkness. Too dark. I'm not going in there without a flashlight. Yeah, good. Good. <laughs> good. Anything over here? There's a... Oh, it's a light. Okay. And I'm assuming... Yeah, it's just a light over there, too. Okay. So, we gotta go down the road. Definitely need a flashlight. It is dark as shit. There's a shoe. Oh, there it is. I think this belongs to Calum. Well, at least you can tie your shoes. That's good. Was it Velcro? Hello, squirrel? Squirrel? Yep, squirrel. Chad the chipmunk, huh? Oh, a chipmunk, I'm sorry. Just a drunk guy in a suit. Chad the chipmunk welcomes you to Atlantic Island Park. Chad can be seen in daily ice sculpting shows in the following location. Ice sculpting shows? Chad the chipmunk, worst in class. Chad can't even seem to pass. Chad gets angry, likes to fight. Chad is beaten every night. Chad will have a dead end job. Chad will die a useless slob. Cheery. Here I sat broken hearted. Speaking of. <laughs> What's this? 
purchase the land on Solomon Island for a pittance, I might add. Whatever old Archie Henderson did to the locals, just the mention of his name had people slamming doors and locking shutters from the moment I arrived on the island. My lawyers had arranged everything in advance, but the realtor still had to come and deliver the keys to me personally. He took it upon himself to offer me another warning. I don't know what you're planning to do with this island, Mr. Winter, but the soil here is bitter with a curse carried from the old country. Old man Henderson, he did terrible dark things. The land remembers, sir. I dismissed him shortly afterwards, mostly amused by his pathetic attempts at warning me off. I have a great vision for this place, and the will to see that vision through to the very end. Atlantic Island Park. The name is perfect, and I cannot imagine it any being anything else. This is the start of something amazing. Then all the dinosaurs break out and kill the Oompa Loompas. And I don't know where I was going with that thought. Hello? This way. Hello? The Tunnel of... Tails. Okay. I thought I said sales. I was like... Is this, is this their, their marketing? Mommy needs to see you, Callum. Oh, Mommy. Why do you sound like you were behind me? Callum, stay where you are. Right, the Svan. So it's the Tunnel of Tales, not the Tunnel of Love. I'm not going in there without a flashlight. Well, it's on a track, that's good to know. Of course, in a horror game, that doesn't really mean much. It's a world of laughter, a world of cheers. Near a great forest, there lived a poor woodcutter, his wife and his two children. A boy named Hansel, and a girl named Gretel. And then the woodcutter they cut off their heads. Poor, and had very little to bite or sup. Sup. What will become of us? The woodcutter asked his wife one night. I tell you what, husband, we will take the children into the thickest part of the forest tomorrow what the fuck? and abandon them there. What? No, my wife, I cannot do that. What I hit? Said the man. Then we will all four starve, you fool. Hansel and Gretel overheard their parents talking, and Gretel began to weep. Do not fret, Gretel, Hansel said. He crept out of the hut gathered white stones from the ground to fill his pockets. Now I want to look for other shit because I bumped into something. The next morning the woodcutter leads the children into the forest. Before they leave, their mother gives them a slice of bread and warns them that they will get no more food that day. Hi! Leaves a trail of white stones How are you, Mr. Chippy Chippy? Into the woods. When their father leaves them, the children okay, I don't want to look at him apparently because he drives my sanity down. Or whatever that was. After receiving a thorough scolding from their parents for getting lost in the woods, the children are sent to bed without any supper. Hansel tried to sneak out and collect more white stones, but found that the door was locked. Tomorrow I will take them into the woods myself, the wife told the woodcutter. In the morning, their mother gave them a slice of bread and led them deep into the forest once again. Oh, Jesus Christ. Frickin' sloggy water. Hansel broke his bread into pieces and left a trail of breadcrumbs to lead them safely home. But hungry-eyed birds snatched up the breadcrumbs, and his trail was destroyed. Bum bum bum. Abandoned by their parents, and unable to find the trail home, 
The children wandered in the forest for three days. What I like is in most stories, you never get to hear the grizzly part there, like in the beginning, oh, they're starving. We're going to lead our kids the out to starve. stumbled into a clearing with an exceedingly strange house. Its walls were made of gingerbread, and its windows were panes of clear sugar. Hansel, and then the house got wet home, when it rained and it just collapsed upon itself. On the walls. Do, 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 do. Nibble, little mouse. My house. An old woman emerged from the house, sniffing the air and peering around with cloudy eyes. Oh, you dear children, who brought you here? Just come in and stay with me. No harm will come to you. But Hansel and Gretel stayed back, for the old woman reminded them of their cruel mother. Come, waiting children, for something to jump out. Don't be afraid. I have something for you. The old woman offered them two enormous lollipops. The children took them and began to eat. You see, nothing to fear here. Come inside, the old woman urged, and the children, still licking their sweets, followed. See, her objective wasn't to kill them, her objective was to give them type 2 diabetes. Oh! What? It's just the swan. Okay. And put Gretel to work, sweeping and cleaning her hut. Your brother will make a good mouthful, the old witch told Gretel. Once he is fattened up, I shall feast upon him. Um time passed and poor well, I can see all the speakers to eat, fearing the day that the witch would eat him. The witch, for her part, grew impatient. Today I will cook and eat your brother, Gretel. Climb inside and light the oven. But Gretel pretended not to understand. No comprende the English. I do not know how. Where is the opening? The old witch said, the opening is here, and she moved to show Gretel. Seizing her courage, brave Gretel, Gretel Sparta kicked the, the wife, sharp, not wife, the witch, into the oven. Into the oven. Gretel slid a large iron bolt over the door to the oven. Gretel freed her brother Hansel, and together they lit a fire beneath the oven. And though she screamed and begged, the children sat by the oven until her screams had stilled, and the witch was cooked. And they feasted for days. And then, because even children can't survive on sweets, they divided up the body of the old witch. I was right. Ate her. They also turned into like cannibals. Well, yeah, t technically, they did. The end. That's a great story to ride on a dark, or not, not a dark tunnel. Normally, probably. What the? Yeah, get these migraines looked at, lady. Okay, so you you weren't in there, Callum. Chatty chippy chipmunk. Swans, gingerbread, and chocolate. Got that for riding that. There's the boy. Oh, you're really far away. I couldn't even hear you. Hansel and Gretel. I used to read it to Callum when the electricity was shut off. Those poor children, the whole world against them, the forest, the birds, the old witch, even their own parents. 
I used to imagine that Callum and I were the kids in that story. Not mother and son, but brother and sister, hand in hand against the unkind world. We were always hungry, looking for our own house made of candy, looking for the sweetness that could take the pain away. Hunger leads people to desperate, terrible places where the tree branches reach like claws. Hard knock life. Ain't all sunshine and rainbows for some people. Most people. Hello. Oh, we're getting closer to him. Another accident. This place. Park maintenance, huh? Something gonna fall out. Oh, let me just draw everything in the county here. Despite the constant interruptions to work, Atlantic Island Park will be opening on time. The governor is booked to cut the ribbon, so the only real question is whether we will have any customers. I'm not truly worried. The customers will come out of simple curiosity. I deduced what was needed from the banned writings of Archie Henderson. Henderson. It's astonishing to think that a resonance of positive emotions can be used to fuel such a process. Henderson, Henderson himself chose to use negative, and that caused some of the taint that still lingers in this place. I will not make his mistakes. Very soon I will know if this has all been for nothing. Can I take the teddy bear? I need the teddy bear. She needs security. Somebody splattered. Saving. Hello? Chippy Chipmunk, are you up there? Can I go up there? I can go here. Callum, come back here right now. I am following the trail to the Octopus of Doom. It's a devil octopus. It's the Kraken. Um. Uh, I'm assuming that says something. I just can't tell. This old thing used to make the blood run to my head. It used to make me dizzy. The guy just snapped. Those poor kids. We were waiting our for our turn on the ride. Frank, me, and the boys. This fellow in the chipmunk suit is making a nice carving while people took photographs. Lawrence wanted to go over to him, but I've always been a bit wary of those suits. They give me the creeps. It's silly, I know. Anyway, the chipmunk man, he was carving and picking away at the ice. And at first we thought he was making some animal, like a tiger or a lion, but as far more and more ice fell away. When you first looked, it was like a human face, smiling out of that block of ice. But the more you looked at it, the more you saw that there was something not quite right about the proportions. Something unnatural that made your heart begin to beat just a little bit faster. Like you were prey and that thing in the ice was a hunter. But then these teenagers walked up and one of them made a face at the carving and said something rude to the guy in the chipmunk suit. And then, well, he went berserk. For a few moments it was chaos. Everybody was running away from the guy who had one of the teenagers on the ground. And he was stab, stab, stabbing with the ice pick. And blood was spraying and people were screaming and Frank and I had the kids and we were dragging them away as fast as we could. And the last thing I saw before Frank dragged me away was that the eyeball of one of those poor kids and landed on the ice sculpture, making the horrible creature look more or less alive. See, it doesn't even have to be an animatronic, it's just costumes of furry mascot things. 
I want to ride in a car. Wait for mommy. Ride the Octatron. Okay. That's what it said was Octatron. Increase speed, decrease speed. Please wait until the ride has come to a full, complete stop. We hope you enjoyed the Octatron and enjoy the rest of your stay here at Atlantic Island Park. Faster and faster and faster and faster. I want to go back in time. She did not have a good time. Alright, sorry about that. Had a little bit of a kitty mishap. So I couldn't move at the moment. Polaroid. Oh, I remember this. <laughs> yeah. And then The boogeyman's behind us. Or something. How did Callum go from being a redhead to a black hair? Stay where you are. Treachery hides in thoughts. Treachery that lashes like a whip and scars our insides. The first time I saw Callum. My thoughts betrayed me. I looked down at this wrinkled, red, bawling thing and I thought, Is that it? We build our world from expectations, and the world that I had built for Callum was no different. He was so real, so there, and so far from my expectations. And it shattered, and as they fell in pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. All of the love that we shared, all the warmth and goodness that followed, built on a single, traitorous thought. Get in here. Seriously, thought those were eyes for a second. There's something in there, though. See if I can get it from this angle when it sparks. Nope. Come out, sweetie. <laughs> Stand in the light for a minute. And I'll announce my location to everybody. What the hell is in there? Ha. I thought working in the park for a summer would be a lot of fun, but the end of season here really drags. There aren't that many tourists that come around, and so most of the staff spend their days standing around gossiping, and most of that gossip is about Chad. I mean, Steve. See? Even I'm starting to call him Chad, and I went to school with the guy. It's that goddamn suit. In the beginning it was a laugh. 
Steve the local lush as Chad the chipmunk finally friend child friendly mascot at Atlantic Island Park. Lock up your daughters and all that. But the more he wears the suit, the weirder Steve is getting. At first it was a little things, like refusing to change out of the suit at work and taking it home with him every day. But then I saw him at Susie's diner still wearing it, and it wasn't even a work day. Some of the staff complained discreetly to park management about the smell, and I saw him walking and talking with Mr. Winter, the owner, one day. But nothing seems to have changed. The suit still smells like a carcass whenever Steve walks by, and apparently Steve has picked up some new skills since the last time I saw him puking up in a gutter outside the Psycoil station, because he sure as hell can carve a mean ice sculpture. The shapes he makes in the ice, though, they give me the creeps. Steve came by the booth today, lucky me. And we just hung around for a while. I couldn't really tell because of the suit, but it seemed like he was just staring at me, sizing me up, eye-fucking me, whatever he was doing. I asked him what he wanted, and he just stood there, not saying anything. Eventually, I called my super supervisor, and when he came by, Chad, Steve, wandered off. My supervisor told me to put everything in writing, so here it is. Also, I quit. I don't want to see that chipmunk suit ever again. Laura Hennon. Well, that's what's inside there. Chad, Steve. So he went a little mental from wearing a fursuit. He didn't want to be a furry. It's one of those bad furries. Nothing against furries. Is this the Octo thingy? I got it has the like Japanese gate behind it and everything. <laughs> Come back. So I'm gonna assume there's a curse on the suit or something that made him go crazy. Just speculation. Or something used to make the suit. Or the suit's haunted, or bumper cars, or Let's bumper cars. And 80s music. Guess it floats someone's boat. Hell yeah. Callum, tell mommy where you are. I'm assuming you're that way, but I want to go on the bumper cars. Once I can figure out how to get to the bumper cars. I'm going to go out and say that she had yeah, shocking revelations that she had under electroshock therapy and a mental health facility of some sort. What the fuck is that? This is asking for trouble. Bumper car is going to come to life. Did I just push this one? Oh, no. Okay. Okay, your lights are on for a reason. Examine accident report. The shakes. Francis Dufresne. 25th October 1976. Laborers working on the crane... Richard Stapleton, Supervisor, Witness, Lawrence Creed, and Michael Edgeworth. Brief description. During the transport of the bumper cars into the arena, one of the straps attaching the load to the truck came untied, causing a cascade of bumper cars onto Francis, who was standing directly, dir standing directing the driver. Francis was crushed by the weight of the cars. Describe injuries. Francis was killed. Well, short and to the point. Did the injured employee see a doctor? Yes. If yes, did you file an employee's portion of a worker's comp form? Yes. 
Comments. Dexter, the truck driver, claims to have seen someone on the back of the load undoing the straps. Nobody else reported seeing that. The sheriff has requested that Derek Dexter provide them with urine samples. What could have been done to prevent this accident? Double checking of the straps after transit should be mandatory and drug screenings for all drivers. Have the unsafe conditions been corrected? No. Additional comments. Excuse me. The burp is not part of the comment. The local laborers are very superstitious, and this hasn't helped. Some of them are refusing to, retur to return to work until we have someone from the local church walk the park and exercise bad spirits. Ah, everything is going to come to life. Doc Brown, did you make another time machine? I can't run to it. I'm assuming I need to go that Callum, way. Where did you go? Callum isn't even talking now. Um, this way? Oh, I can run now. It's a matter of public record that I am a failure as a mother. Once, when Callum was very small, I left him asleep in the car while I ran an errand. Don't even remember what it was. When I came back, the sheriff was standing next to the car, watching my boy through the window. I didn't like what I saw in his eyes. Judgment. He wrote me the ticket without saying a word. Just the scratch scratch of his pen on the notepad. When he gave it to me, our eyes met. I know what you're going through. My daughter, Helen, she... Just get some help. Help was a bolt of lightning. Help was a thousand yep. bolts surging through my veins. Help is agony. I'd rather die. I wanted to scream. I'd rather you pulled your gun and shot me. But instead my mouth said, Yes, Sheriff. How long did you leave the kid in the car? I mean... If you're in and out, it's one thing, but if you're in there for like an hour, or like half an hour even, then yeah, there's an issue, but... Well, there's a missing piece. Is this a puzzle? Or do I just have to ride the Ferris wheel next? Flashlight? Continually delayed by the incompetence of the builders, the problem is that they are locals and so they believe a lot of the rumors about what Old Man Henderson used to do here. They grew up on those tales. Every time a vault comes loose or a wrench goes missing, those fools are crossing themselves against the black magic. Of course, that is why I chose this site over all the other potentials. Solomon Island is a nexus for dark energies, and the thought of all that power just dissipating beneath the earth here, it makes my skin crawl. I called in a few favorites back in Brooklyn and got someone at the local academy to see if they had any interesting books about local history. It turns out they do, and it turns out that old man Henderson has some pretty strong connections to the Brooklyn crowd. Perhaps something he wrote will help me find the piece of the plans that I am missing. So you knew some crappy shit was going on down here. And you wanted to cover it with an amusement park to make it better? that what I'm understanding? Oh, that's just the shadows from that. I was like, what's coming around the corner? Um... I think we're gonna call. Hold on. Callum, where did you go? First I have to call. Callum is nowhere around here. But I think we're going to call it here before I get on the Ferris wheel. Uh, so far, I like the atmosphere. I don't think I've gotten into the real dark parts yet. Aside from the tunnel there, that was kind of scary. But we'll find out in the next episode. So, hope you guys liked the video. Please hit the like button if you did.
thanks so much for watching. If you want to get notified of any other videos of mine, hit the subscribe. Greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.